All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with whoever you know. And don't forget, please, to download the video right after we finish. You know, when Muslims, they make a questions, they don't really ask questions to learn or to get answers as much they make questions to make a mockery. And this is why you always notice that Muslims, they invite people who have no idea what Islam is about. And that is for a very reason. Because if you do not know what Islam is about, then you as a Christian, you expect people to invite you to do a debate, not a mockery. Always take into your consideration that the first thing the Muslims they try to do when they talk to you is the mockery, because this is a religion of a mockery. In the front of us here, we have a video translated. I think this is to Indonesian. And I think somebody, he posted this uh, video on my uh, page. And actually, I promised you, or I said, I'm going to be away for two days, right? But I cannot resist the temptation, even though, like, I want to really take a break. But the temptation, which is a good temptation to serve the Lord, is stronger than my desire to stay away for two days. So here, uh, the Muslim, he asked uh, a Christian minister, when Jesus, he prayed, did he pray to the God, the Father, or God, the Holy Spirit? The Christian preacher, he uh, explained, as we Christians believe. But the Muslims, he insists, he said, did Jesus pray as the Jews who pray to one God? Or he pray as the Christians who pray to the gods of the Trinity. And here we notice, you know, uh, why it's very important when you want to debate Muslims to understand the mentality of this cult followers. Don't answer using your logic because they are not asking to learn, they are asking to make a mockery. So let us use their logic the Bible says it clearly that the Messiah he was born onto this earth by a woman her name is Maryam and how this woman Maryam she was able to have a child in both books the Quran and the Bible it says the following and you can read any translation you wish Luke chapter 1 verse number 35 the angel he came to Mary and he says the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you therefore the child will be born and will be called the Son of God so how Mary, she conceived a son by the Holy Spirit. The Quran, which is the yellow pages of Muhammad, confirm that Jesus, he accompanied always by the Holy Spirit, which is the Bible confirm. Always. If we go to the Quran, and now let us see if the Muslim, they will say, this is not a true. Chapter 2, verse number 87, it says, We gave Moses the book, and then after that we send the Isa, and then it says, Translation. This is the Muslim translation, not my translation. And we supported him with the Holy Spirit. So even the Quran confirmed that the Holy Spirit is always with Jesus. So why Jesus, when he pray, he will pray to the Father only. The question or the answer is there. Because the Holy Spirit is with him. And this is how silly the Muslims questions. Did Jesus pray to the Father? Or he prayed to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Secondly, do you know even what the word Father mean? When I say my Father, 
it's mean he is the head of the house when I say my father it's mean he is the head of me so for sure Jesus will pray to the father for this is the head and this is how silly the Muslims they are they do not even know what the word father mean I mean isn't it silly for you to say did he pray for the father or to the Holy Spirit when the Bible all of it says that God the Father is the one in charge the Messiah he said and here we get the Muhammadan busted again the Messiah said not me let us show you some verses hold on If we go to John chapter 5 John chapter 5 a Muslim saying but according to Muhammad Muslim scholar how they do interrupt the Holy Spirit because it's mentioned in the Bible when Jesus will send the comforter we will answer you about that and here we will see another deception the Muslims they always come with and here you will notice uh, how Fadi uh, who is a Muslim he showed the foolishness of Islam because the Muslim they say the Holy Spirit or the one that's the, the Holy Spirit which uh, Jesus will send is Muhammad but the Muslims in their interpretation they say that the Holy Spirit is Jibreel <laughs> but there is nowhere in the Quran it's ever says that the Holy Spirit is Jibreel nowhere not a single verse but you just the truth every Muslim who lie and say that the Holy Spirit or the spirit which Jesus will, will send back or that the father will send back the converter is Muhammad when you just say it how the Muslims they interrupt or give interpretation for the Holy Spirit because it's mentioned in the Bible when Jesus said I will send the converter so the Muslims they fool themselves and they say the converter is Muhammad but Muhammad is not a spirit and here we see the stupidity of this cult because they are desperate trying to find a place for this cult leader his name is Muhammad who changed his name from Qatham to Muhammad which means the praised one which means he think he is God but we will go back to the converter later and I think already we 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 got you a very cold shower in the late night here you see the Messiah saying clearly that he always obedience to the father so what does that mean that's mean the father is the head so yes it's a trinity but the father is the one in charge in John 5 19 27 you can read and you can freeze the, the, the page and you will see clearly how the Messiah announced that and even he says that nothing from my own it's from my father in the same time he said that for the father raises the dead give them life so also the son give life which means the authority of the son is from the authority of the father to whom he will and the Muslim they say to you where Jesus says I am God raising people from the death is an authority given to the son but this is an authority of the father so God the father and God the son they raise people from death but the Messiah here explaining more and he says for the father he judged no one but has given all the judgment to the son given so Jesus the Messiah the Christ is the judge of all mankind but this is an authority given to him from the father so it's very silly to ask those questions because simply they, they play dumb or maybe they are dumb I'm not sure you chose one that's all my own honor of the son just as the honor of the father and who 
whoever does not honor the son does not honor the father so when the Muslims they make a mockery of Jesus the son of God they are making mockery of the father in the same time who who sent him so the Messiah he confirmed that he himself is sent by the father which means the father is the one who have the authority and the Messiah always is obedient so it's very normal that the Messiah he is praying for the father and the, the Holy Spirit is with the Messiah so it's very silly and you need to learn how to answer the silly ones my friend Christians do you understand what I just said you need to learn how to answer the silly ones they are silly trying to make a mockery and then the Messiah said truly truly I say to you whoever hear my words believe to him who sent me has eternal life so believing in the word of Jesus and the one who sent me will be giving you eternal life the Messiah again confirmed that the Son of God was sent by the Father he does not come into judgment but he passed from death to life truly truly I say to you an hour is coming and now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live by hearing the voice of the Son of God those who they are dead they will live for as the father has life in himself so he has granted the son also to have life in himself and he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man which means son of God in the flesh of a man so all of this and you are asking why Jesus is a praying to the father this is stupid of you isn't it obvious Jesus saying that the father is the one who sent me and what does that mean <laughs> do you guys do you understand people Christians Muslims do you understand so look how powerful this chapter this chapter alone silence all the Muslim Muhammadan about how Jesus he prayed to the father and you will notice here Jesus he confirmed that he is a divine because why because he have the judgment of all mankind all mankind their judgment in the hand of Jesus the Christ and he give life and those who hear his voice they will live and yet they say to you where Jesus says I am God but the Muslims only will quote for you Jesus saying I can do nothing of my own and well Jesus is confirming to you that what he have is given to him by the Father and this is the whole point this is what the Trinity is about but those silly they don't even know what we are talking about now we go back to the Quran to continue getting them busted because we are not done are we no way we just started if we go in the Quran when the Quran says we supported Jesus by the Holy Spirit if there is anyone was supported by the Holy Spirit any Muslim can answer is that something have to do with Jesus only Any Muslim? If there is any other person was supported by the Holy Spirit beside Jesus, if we go in the Quran and we search, we find that always the word Holy Spirit always appear after the name of Jesus. Chapter 2, verse number 87. We show you the translation. Chapter 2, verse number 253. Let us see. Who is the one who is sponsored by the Holy Spirit? Read carefully. And this is not my translation. This is the translation of the Abdul, the Muhammadan. And we supported him with the Holy Spirit. 
was Muhammad supported by the Holy Spirit in their Quran show me a verse uh, let me let me say it to you the way uh, Mimi hijab he said show me answer me silence me huh absolutely Muhammad he copied the the word Holy Spirit from the Bible and we can prove it to you easy actually we just showed you how the angel came to Mary and said to her that you will you will carry a son the Holy Spirit will come upon you who is the one will come upon you the Holy Spirit and this is exactly what the Quran is saying copying it from the Bible almost word by word If you go in chapter 5 verse number 110 it says Allah talking not me Oh Isa remember my favor upon you and your mother I strength thee with the Holy Spirit okay hold on so Isa was a strength by the Holy Spirit what does that mean was Isa fighting a war was he going uh, with a sword from place to place how how he is strength by the Holy Spirit that's mean the Holy Spirit is always accompany the Messiah if not is within the Messiah as you see here in the Quran so when a Muslim he says did you pray to far to the father or he prayed to the father and the Holy Spirit same time the Muslim Abdul he said in that video let me show you the video again so we can laugh it's a for for a for a comedy hmm? you can watch it and you can laugh I think this is a translation for uh, Indonesian he said was Jesus praying like the Jews who believe in Unitarian God or the Christians who believe in the Trinitarian God here you will find how silly and how stupid the one who is asking question because he just exposed the God of Islam. Do you remember, guys, when Muhammad Hijab he said that for four thousand years, four thousand years, brother, the Jews they've been commanded to worship only one God, which means four thousand years, which means since the time of Moses until now. This is what four thousand years now, only one God. You can watch a debate with David Wood. But isn't it the Quran says that the Jews they worship someone beside God? And even they believe he is a son of God. Here you will notice how the Muslims expose their cult because you are saying the Jews they only believe in one God, and you said you call the word Unitarian. But the Quran have different idea. So let us see who is of you is lying, either Allah or the Muhammadan. In chapter 9, verse number 30, it says, and the Jews says, is, uh, not Isra, or this is a false translation, it's Uzair, there's no Isra. The Muslim, they could not find uh, Uzair, so they come with the name Isra. They said this is the most closest maybe to the Jews to fool them. There's no Isra whatsoever. It is Uzair, and here we go. This is the word in Arabic for those who know Arabic. And we cannot find in any book the word Uzair. It's a stupid name. Muhammad, as usual, he cannot copy name correctly. So, and the Jews, they say, Uzair is the son of Allah. So how you lie and you in the video and you say the Jews, did Jesus pray to the Unitarian God or he prayed to the Trinitarian God? When your Quran says the Jews don't believe in a Unitarian God the way you are trying to make it look like. Are we following guys? People are you following? Do you see how silly I wish I can play the video for you just for a love but they will they will uh, as usual always I play a Muslim video they they flag it for copyright so the Jews in the Quran they did not always believe in one Unitarian God the way you are claiming. So Allah must be a liar because you are saying, did Jesus pray like the Jews for one God or he prayed to the Trinitarian God? Well, I don't see the Trinitarian. I don't see the Unitarian, the one you are talking about uh, here. 
I see the Jews at least they, they believe in God the Father God the Son this is how silly the Muslims are now we continue did the Jews believe really that God is one as number absolutely not because if we go in the Bible from the first two lines in the Bible not even the third line you will see in the book of Genesis it says in the book of Genesis let me open it <laughs> I really find the, the Muslims is really funny people <laughs> It's like a comedy show <laughs> and this is why guys honestly I don't want to go on air but I I cannot resist I cannot resist to get this cult busted I am a warrior for my Lord and I serve him in every way I can and I don't care really if I die now from being tired I would be happy to do so this is the book of Genesis for every ignorant Muslim who keeps saying in the Old Testament we cannot find that God is more than one they say to you that it says your God is one the one there is Echad Echad is not one in number Echad is a unity this is the why the Bible the same book it says that the man he will leave his parents and he will become Echad with his wife have you ever heard of a man and a woman they became one literally no it is not a oneness of number a has nothing to do with oneness of number and here if you read with me in the book of Genesis you will see that the first thing God the first thing our God not the God of Islam the God of Islam he cannot even create a watermelon the first thing he said there in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water so here there was nothing there's no angels there's no earth there is no heaven and now God he created them this is the beginning okay and who was there according to this verse after the creation is done the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water this is the book of the Jews which is our book too confirming at least in this verse to God and his spirit just please take a note the Muhammadan their God he has no spirit and he is not a spirit and this is additional proof that Allah has nothing to do with the God of the Jews because the God of the Jews he has a spirit and he is a spirit the God of the Muhammadan he has no spirit and he is not a spirit and that is saying us that the nature of the two God, the fake God Allah and the true God Elohim, Jehovah, are totally different. Not only the ethic and the teaching and everything, even the nature are different. Okay, you keep saying that the Jews do not heard, they never heard of the Holy Spirit. Why you are lying? You keep saying that the Bible says, Oh, Jews, oh, your God is one. Liar one is not a one of number if we go in the bible we will find many example what is word echad mean as you see in the front of you here O israel yahweh is our god yahweh is echad what does that mean Compare it to other verse in the Bible right away. You will learn right away that the word Echad have nothing to do with one as number It is one as unity Read carefully in the book of Genesis Chapter 2 verse number 24 
the two shall come or shall become a god I'm talking about what about the man and the wife the husband and the wife they shall become one one flesh but is that literally true no the man is a man the woman is a woman they are two two but they are one it's a unity and it is the same word echad so when a muslim he tried to fool us like you know mimi hijab he went in a debate and he told us elijah mean god is with us <laughs> actually i remember that day when i heard this i was dying from laughing literally dying from laughing so here we notice that the Muslims who they try hard trying their best not only they help us to understand the nature of this cult which is not nothing but satanic trying to make a mockery but it help us we as a Christians to refute the mockery of Satan the mockery of the Satan because Satan always try to do mockery of God and this is why the nature of this cult is about making mockery always. There is, uh, there is always, you know, uh, reference and proofs. But when a Muslim he try to ask you, he is not asking to learn. And always you have to put that in your consideration. He is not asking to learn. There's a huge difference between somebody is asking to learn and somebody is asking to make fun of you. You know what I mean? Imagine you are a teacher and you have a bunch of idiot students. All the time they make fun of you. Now, who is the stupid here? The student or the teacher? Obviously, the student. But maybe the teacher is not a teacher who can make mockery of those stupid you know uh, uh, students but they can make mockery of him because he is a decent man <laughs> you know the, the one who make mockery not necessarily is the one is right mostly it is the opposite actually they use the mockery in order to cover disability always and you know I am debating Muslims for a long long time now we go back to this Mohammedan who says to us he wanna he wanna know about the converter and the Muslim they claim that the converter is his name is Muhammad hmm. the converter is Muhammad are you sure if I start reading for you, Muslims, you will cry and you will ask yourself why we are silly. Why we Muslims we don't see? Why we Muslims do not know? Why we don't read? Well, this is why you are a Muslim. Because if you read, you will not stay as a Muslim. If we go and read, the verses the Muslims they are talking about where it's supposedly they claim that those verses is speaking about Muhammad that he is the comforter let me see let me open the verses so we can laugh together <laughs> I really <laughs> Muhammad is the Muhammad himself. He tried to commit suicide many times. Let him convert himself first. How he can be the converter? But just to show you how Muslims they make mockery of their prophet when they say that Muhammad was the converter. Uh, before I go to the converter, actually, remember that the father, our God, is called the father for a reason, for he is the father. And we are not the slaves but when we say that the God is the father it's different when the Messiah say it from the way we say it but still the Messiah is always obedience to the father 
if we go to the Bible and we read about the Muslim claim <clears throat> Let us go there and try not to laugh with me at this madness. Where Muslims they say that Muhammad is the comforter. All right. You know what? I'm going to play the voice so we can hear it. It's always a blessing to hear the Bible for those who like to listen. It's going to be painful for the Muslims, I understand, but let your devil help you to handle it. John 16. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come... Guys, who is going to send the Comforter? Who is the one who will send? Are you there, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Fadi, the Muslim uh, uh, guy? Are you there, Mr. Fadi? Who is the one who will send the Comforter, the Messiah? So when the Muslim, they say, that the Messiah is sending Muhammad. That's mean Muhammad is the God of uh, Jesus is the God of Muhammad, because Muhammad, according to you, he's a prophet. You made him equal to the Comforter, right? So let us assume that you are saying, okay, Muhammad is the Comforter. Okay, so Jesus will send him. I thought the one who sent Muhammad is Allah. And here you notice how silly the Muslims are when they make such a claim. They don't even read. They are copy paste people. You know, they are ignorant like their prophet. You see, illiteracy is not about reading or writing. Illiteracy is not about is about knowing the book of God. And this is what the Quran is saying. We can we prove it many times. Quran never said that Muhammad is illiterate because he did not know how to write, how to read. Actually, there's many hadith proving that he knew how to write, how to read. Quran says it clearly that illiteracy of the Muhammadan it is because they do not know the book of God. This is why we Christians. Are called the people of the book and the Muslims are not people of the book did you ask yourself why the Quran call us people of the book and here by the way by saying we are the people of the book you just confirm that you Muslims have no book and we are the one and the only one who have a book read carefully chapter 2 verse number 78 among them are illiterate folk who know the scripture not <laughs> correct <laughs> so the quran confirmed that illiteracy is not about not knowing how to write how to read it's about not knowing the book and this is why the quran says it clearly in chapter as an example at chapter 3 verse number 20 between them there is ummiyin which mean illiterate and they are people who have the book so the quran confirm that allah divide people to two kind of people here there is people who they are learned and there is people who they are unlearned those who they are learned they are called people of the book people of the scriptures and those who they are unlearned they call them Umiyin, which mean illiterate. Do you see? Do you see the the the, uh, the madness? And by the way, the translation here is kind it's it's kind of correct and wrong in the same time. Like the only correct thing in this translation is Islam is to mean mean to surrender, not submission, as many false translations they say. 
but the rest is not really accurate. Let's change the translation and you will see something different. Let us go to another Abdul, Yusuf Ali. Read carefully. And say to the people of the book, and those who they are and learn, do you see it? So the Quran, he claimed, or the Quran says, he trying to copy the, the Torah. The Torah called then the, the, the nations who they are not Jews, Umiyin, Gomai, which means the ones who do not know about God. They are illiterate about God. They are ignorant about God. So here it says, those who have a book and those who they are illiterate. Does that mean all the Christians know how to write, how to read at the time? It's impossible. So Muhammadans still did not know even the meaning of their book. So how do you expect them to know what is written in your book? Are we good? Are we having a good time? This is how we get them busted. Very easy. Now, somebody might say to me, okay, where you got that the, the father is the head? God the head. Well, the Bible says that clearly. I showed you John chapter 5, and we did read together. Saying it clearly that everything Jesus did, he uh, God the Father, he sent him. God the Father, he told him. God the Father gave him. The authority he have is from God the Father, our my Father, your God and my God. This is what he meant. Which means he is the one who have the authority, and whatever I have, it is given to me from him. Because people, they are questioning, but you are just a man. Who are you? Who are you? Jesus forgives sin. Who are you? Jesus raised people from death. Who are you? Jesus can make the blind see. Who are you? He told them, this is who I am. And then he said, the one who saw me, he saw the Father. For later in the Bible, we will see that it says that Jesus the Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Now, let us go to different verse in the Bible. Oh, we are not we are not done with the comforter. Yes, it's my fault. Forgive me, please. I, I didn't, I'm not done with the comforter. Let's go to the comforter. I want to make the Muslims happy. <laughs> so the first thing we said clearly, the Bible says that the one who will send the comforter is the Messiah, and that is a clear proof that the Messiah is a, a divine. Because the Comforter, later we will see that it is the Holy Spirit. Read carefully. Nevertheless, oh, hold on. We arrive uh, here. Let us continue with the, actually the person who was reading. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. <clears throat> of righteousness because I go to my Father. And ye see me no more of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Even the Holy Spirit, he, the Holy Spirit as a person, is hearing what the father says to him and he deliver and then the muslims they say to us that muhammad must be the comforter when the when the bible says it clearly that he is the spirit of the truth who is the truth god this is why jesus says i am the truth So the spirit of the truth, of truth, is go, is to come, and he will guide you into the truth, all the truth. The truth about what? Is it about science? No, no, it's about God. For he shall not speak for himself, but who is a, who, who, uh, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, 
so if Muhammad was the converter then he should clarify Jesus and worship him become um, because here the the words here is supposed to the Muslim they change the converter they make it a man who he they believe that he is a prophet not God he is not a Holy Spirit he's not a divine so what the glorify me mean what did Muhammad glorify Jesus what does that mean <laughs> and he shall receive of mine and shall show it into you all things that the father has are mine therefore said I that shall take of mine and shall uh, show into you a little so anyway like this is how silly the Muslims when they try desperately trying to find their prophet in the in the Bible, but they cannot find him. So sometimes they say to you, uh, we can find him in Muhammadim in the Song of Songs. The Song of Songs for thee that was for century almost, more than 20 years making fun of it, saying that the Song of Songs is the book of porn. One day somebody told Muhammad Ahmad Didat that the name of Muhammad appeared him. What is the name of Muhammad? Muhammadim. But this is not the name of Muhammad. Muhammad is not a name actually. Muhammad is a word meaning praised one. This is not the name of a person. So now if I go and go and go in the Bible, anytime we find the word praised one, that's mean Muhammad is there. And because the Muslims are so desperate to find the name of their prophet, I remember uh, 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 Zakir Naik, he was debating with someone who's a Hindu, and he said that in your book, the name of the prophet Muhammad appear as Muhammad. But in the book of the Hindu guy, Muhammad is an evil spirit. Imagine. Desperately, just because they are looking for the name of Muhammad, he admitted that his prophet Muhammad is an evil spirit. All right. Now, let us continue, shall we? More than all of this. When Jesus he pray and the Muslim he says why he pray. Why Jesus he pray? Okay, let us go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. It says, and you can read any translation you want, that the Messiah, he is asking in their behalf. My prayer is not for the world, but for those who you have given me, because they belong to you. Guys, did Jesus say in the cross, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing? Is that true? Is that true? Did Jesus say, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing? Because they crucified him this is confirmed my prayer is not for the world but for those who you have given me because they belong to you and the Jewish they are the people of God and Jesus he don't want them to be punished my prayer is not what you think I'm trying to help you so the son he speak to the father and that is very clear but when Allah in the Quran he speak and he says I pray on Muhammad Allah he pray to who you can watch a video I made about a fool his name is Mimi hijab and you can search for actually let me copy the, the link for you later you can watch it and you can die laughing at the stupidity of those who they try to refute us and this is why they will not dare to debate me in the debate, this Mimi Hijab, he said that Allah, he pray for, not to. But Allah, he pray to who? The Messiah, he pray to the Father. Well, that's 
I mean, that's it. The Christian believe in three person, one God. Okay, the Messiah praying to the Father, His Father. Allah, He prayed to who? To His Father. Do you have a Trinity? So the Muslims, in order to cover the shame and the stupidity, they say that Allah he is not praying, He is sending a blessing. But look what happened. Actually, this guy, he made a video to refute me, supposedly. And you can look for this. You know, watch the same video we are talking about. Muhammad Hijab confirm, confirms that Allah prays and post the bait video. You can watch this video and enjoy it as you see it in the screen. You can search for it. Where this guy, he come and he says, okay, well, the Quran says, in one verse in the Quran, it says that Allah, you, you salli, you know, is that mean Allah is uh, worshiping Muhammad? But he admit that he prays and he said Allah he prays. Is that mean he prayed to Muhammad? I don't care he prays he worship Muhammad or not. That's not the question. Allah he prayed to who? No, we will not take any calls because simply I wasn't planning really to come here and I don't want you know uh, Maybe if I you see I, I suppose not to come here until the coming two days but as usual, I know it. I cannot resist to get them busted. However, uh, <clears throat> is God the Father? He is the head. He is the head. Even he is the head of a Christ himself. Not only us. If we go to the Bible and the verses are in front of us, as you see, First Corinthians eleven thirteen, it says it clearly that the head of a Christ is God the Father. So the Bible all over confirm, and this is why the Messiah he speak to the Father. In the way we see, for he is still the head. <laughs> so, uh, the Muslims, because desperately they are trying to find something and they try to make it look funny, but the funny is you. How you can believe in a God who have no spirit and he is not a spirit that your God is a zombie If your God he is a physical being, but yet he has no spirit. That's mean. He is a zombie literally Literally Do we have any Muslim want to say something? So when a Muslim he speak about worshiping one God, I really laugh because what one God mean? I mean, who care if Allah is one or five or ten? The question is, is he real or not? <laughs> you know what I mean, guys? Let us say there's a guy who is, uh, I don't want to say Hindu, I don't want to say whatever religion. Let us say his name, his religion, his name, Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola. He believe in God. His name, uh, his God name. They are his God is like he have like a ten thousand gods, and then we discover that they are true God. That would not change anything. Either, either there is or there is not one or ten thousand. That would not change. So what if there is ten thousand God? What we would do? We we'll kill them? Are you going to make uh, like uh, the numbers of God fit with your uh, request? Believing in God is believing in whatever He is. As simple as that. If there is 10,000, then there is 10,000. If there is one, there is one. We Christian, we believe in one God. It's not you Muslims, and we can prove it very easy. When the Quran says that if Allah, he want to have sex with the women, hmm? in chapter 21, verse Number 17. And here the Muslim they translate the word lahu as pastime. The word lahu, it's not pastime, it is a woman. It's mean fun, but this is how the Arab they call the women. So if you want to have a woman, we could found it with ourselves, not our presence. False translation. 
change the translator you will see how translation and how everything the fabrication of the Muhammadan change immediately it's like a miracle as if like, as if it's like a new book I just changed the translator I did not change the book it's just a translator look what happened had we intended to take a pastime ie wife it doesn't say pastime stop lying lahu is a woman and it is not just a woman a woman for sex that's why they call it lahu fun fun so had we intended to take a woman for sex which will provide me with a son we should we could surely have taken it from us Okay, Allah will have sex with us. Who is us? The Muslims who give us headache that Allah is one. Now Allah will have sex with the women, which is us. When we ask the Muslims why Allah, he keeps saying we, us, etc. They say this is majestic. Okay, Allah the majestic, he will have sex with the majestic Allah. You cannot say here that Allah is one anymore because he said uh, if I want to have a woman and the funny the Muslim they say to you they might say to you Christians I hope you Christians are taking notes because all those questions the Muslims will hit you with they say why Jesus is male why Jesus is what is male okay okay well, can I ask you the same question Jesus is male because the, 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 the gender here is not because Jesus did not have sex with anyone but the gender is because he come in the flesh of a man but here we have God not in the form of a man he is God as he is supposedly is speaking about if he want to have sex he will have it with us that's mean you're God he have a gender and the gender is active real for sex and he do it and if you want to have sex he would have sex with us who is us Any Muslim can tell us. So in this verse, we confirm two things that Allah is a male, and Allah He will have sex with us. But who is us? You give us headache that Allah is one. How many of you save the reference? Chapter 21, verse number 17. And you can go and read the tafsir of Jalalain as an example. He says it clearly that Allah He will have, if we want to have sex, He will have sex with the black the, 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 the black-eyed women. But the eye, black eyed women, they are human. How Allah is going to have sex with the black eyed women? And they are a human. In order for you, you see, uh, because even it says they are, he want to have sex so he can have a child. If a donkey have sex, if a horse have a donkey with say with with the with the with the with the, uh, with the horse, they, it, you know they, they will have uh, they will have a mule. But they have to be from the same family. Donkeys, horse are from the same family. They are not the same kind, but the same family. Wolf and dog, they are not the same thing, but they are the same family. Do you understand me? But Allah having sexual relationship, saying if you want to have, he will have it with us. And who is us? We find that it is a female woman who is described that Muslim Muhammad and themselves they would have sex with her so how a man a normal man can have sex with the same women which Allah he is saying it is possible for me if I want to have sex I'm going to have it with black-eyed women this is tafsir al Jalalain, chapter number 21 verse number 17 as you see we don't make our own interpretation this is your Muslim interpretation because I know you will jump all over me says where do you get this from and this is the official government of the kingdom of Jordan the king of Jordan himself he owned the, the website had we desired to find a diversion some diversion that would provide a diversion in the way of a partner or a child partner okay who is the partner read carefully would have found it with ourselves ourselves okay who's ourselves among the beautiful eyed horis or the angels they will say that the angels are the children's and the holy are the wife. But will be funny is Allah when I have sex with the angels too. So 
what Allah says about ourself when he say ourself we find in the tafsir the Muslims they try to find a solution for this ourselves saying ourselves mean the black-eyed women but to say that the black-eyed women are ourselves that mean Allah himself is a man too for those are human to say this is ourself that's mean Allah and the women they are from the same kind are we following people when I say my people it's mean I am from the people right do I agree my people that's mean I am one of them we are all people and we are from the same kind so the Arab is an Arab the African is an African etc my people the second you say my people it's mean that you are from this group okay Allah he says ourselves and then the Muslims not me saying that ourself is the beautiful eyed Huris or the angels <laughs> if you say and if you go and say that Allah is one of the angels that means you became Jehovah's Witnesses good for you <laughs> how in the world those people brain function Any Muhammadan? What is this? Allah is one. They give us headache by Allah is one. Allah is one, and then Allah the one he says ourself, and ourself is a woman he will sleep with. What about Christian questions? What about Christian questions? What does that mean? There is a guy who wanted to call you in the name Yasin. Okay, well, you know, where is what are, is he here in the chat? Uh, yes, in we will go. I, you know, usually we go always uh, every day, but uh, I might take for like I mean, 48 hours. I want to go on air, but uh, you're seeing you are you want to call me, okay? Yes, in give me your uh, Skype, give me your Skype ID. I will call you. Look, because you say, I say, you said, because you said yes, like this, it sounds like you are very excited, and I like excited Muslims. I hope you will stay excited when you call me. <clears throat> Give me your ID, Mr. Yassin. I'm waiting, my friend. I cannot wait for long. You don't have a Skype, so how I'm going to talk to you? Okay, you send me Jibril when he is ready. Okay, let me let me let me know. Let me know when Jibril is ready. You can send me the debate you want to do. Okay, so what I will do with him? I mean, this is silly. I mean, I mean, look how silly they are. I want to debate you. He was not expecting I will see his text, but he's like, "What?" He saw my text, and now he's saying yes. So you want to debate me? Doing what? So how you want to debate me? Anyway, let it go. He is a Muhammadan. Nothing new. Nothing new. Absolutely. All right. Uh, what else do you want to say? Well, there's nothing really much. I mean, that's that's enough. That's enough for today.
but I find the, the Muslims argument always is a kind of a child child argument they are not mature they have a lack of maturity maturity the same as their God look what their God says about why Allah he don't have a son Allah he wanna he wanna get the Christian busted why he don't have a son look at this according to Allah he don't have a son because you don't have a girlfriend I mean this is very logical <laughs> you know I mean look at this what is this this is God talking God saying how Allah can have a son while he don't have a girlfriend what hello here you see how shallow the author of the Quran because by saying that this is chapter 6 verse no 101 by saying that you are saying claiming that the Christian believed that God have a wife and therefore he have a son is that correct guys this is what the verse mean if you are ask if you, you are refuting the Christians Saying to them, how God have a son? But the Christian don't believe that God have a wife. <laughs> the Christian do not believe that Mary, she was the wife of, of, of God. <laughs> Same time, here you notice the stupidity of the author of the Quran when he said, and I am quoting, not, and this is not my translation, how can he have a children by the way it doesn't say children it says a son change the translate i mean we have to keep changing translation i mean disgusting i'm really disgusted can't we find an honest muslim translation i mean why why it's impossible to find one muslim he have a decency to translate what children it says a son here we go we change the translator Look what happened. Miracle. The word the children became a son. There's a huge difference between children and son. Correct, guys? Children is many. Son is one. So why you say it says son? But put it son. Why you are saying children? How can he have a son when he have no girlfriend? Even the word it's not wife, it's a it's a it's a girlfriend. But here we notice something very stupid too. Because the one who speak in the Quran, he says to him, okay, who is the one who's talking? They say Allah. If Allah is one, why he speak about himself as the other person? Why don't say to me? <laughs> and then he continued doing his madness. Not only he say to him, which is very funny, obviously the author of the Quran, he forgot to switch. He says, how can he? He who Allah, but are you but you are Allah? Why you are saying he? And then he says, How can he have a son? Okay, hold on. Why he cannot he? Isn't he God? I mean, if God, you see, you, you see, guys, don't feel bad if you cannot have everything. Here we go. Allah Himself, he cannot have a son. <laughs> You know what I mean, guys? Do you see the stupidity? Like, you might feel bad because you cannot buy a Lamborghini or Ferrari. Huh? Or you might feel bad because you are married but you cannot have a son. Don't worry, even Allah, He cannot have that. I mean, hello? Even God in Islam, He cannot have everything. Here we go. How can He? How can? Questioning what? When you say how can, it's me questioning the ability. The second we question the ability of God, that's mean. And who is the question? Allah Himself, which make it really horrible. Because you see, if I say, How can God? I am asking question. But when God Himself He says, How can He have a son? If what? If He has no concert. The answer is the logic 
of the question Allah cannot have a son what is the reason you don't have a girlfriend so how Allah can be God the God of Mary or Maryam he made her have a son yet she have no boyfriend she don't have a husband so why the God of Islam and the funny in the Quran Mary she was a virgin and here you see the contradiction if you are trying to refute the Christians well the Christians believe that Mary she have no husband and yet she have a son so how you say how I can have a son if I don't have a, 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 a etc and then who is the one who's calling hello hello are you there hello yes M mute you too please hello can you hear me yes i hear you are you a muslim my friend we are live on youtube hello yes what happened <laughs> Why you hang up? <clears throat> Let me call you back. Answer what? Do you want to talk or no? Okay, you don't want to call, you don't want to talk, let me block you then. I will give you just uh, two minutes to call me back. If you don't call me back, I'm not going to waste my time. So guys, Allah questioning the ability of Allah. Saying, Allah saying to Allah, how can he have a son when he have no girlfriend? How this can be an answer from God? Any Muhammadan? Hello? Hello? Hello. Yes, you are live on YouTube. Please mute YouTube. Can you hear me? Mute YouTube. Go ahead. What do you want to say to us? Yes, you are live on YouTube. What do you want to say? What tra what tra translation is this you're using? Any translation you wish. Which translation you like? You are a Muslim, right? Yeah. All right. What's your name, my friend? Muhammad. Muhammad. That's wonderful. I like Muhammad names. Okay. What translation you like to read? This is Yusuf Ali. Yusuf Ali? Yeah. You could use Dr. Zach Naik. I don't know if they have it here in this website. Choose one, they have it in this website. Which one? I'm showing you in the screen. Show me on the screen. Yeah, which one? There is um, Ahmad Ali, Ahmad Raza Khan, Arbery, uh, Dri Abadi, yes. Halil. Hal Shakir. Shakir, okay, Shakir. Here we go. This is Shakir. You see it? Okay. Click apply. All right. Here we go. So, what do you want to say to us about this? This is um, Allah speaking. Hmm. You, we change the translation. So, what do you want to say now? How do you say about the Allah that He had sons? Hmm. And why Allah saying, how could he have a son when he has no girlfriend? Because he is the creator of his universe. He can so the one make... who created the universe, he cannot have a son because he didn't have a girlfriend. So he is not almighty. Almighty, he can do anything he wish. But he is almighty. No, okay, almighty is somebody, he's, he, he, he do anything. 
He always says, read carefully. So, so how did God make Jesus if he was, if he had no um, wife? Sorry? How did God make Jesus if he had no wife? That's a good question. First of all, who says to you that God, he made Jesus? Do you have any reference that says God, he made Jesus? Secondly, I'm asking you here, when it, if we go about and talk about Jesus in the Quran, Mary in the Quran, she delivered a child, his name is Asa, but she don't have a husband or a boyfriend. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so how the God of Miriam was able to do that with Miriam, but yet the God of Muhammad, he cannot do that to himself. He cannot have a son without having a girlfriend. How could, how could he have a son when he has no concept and he himself created everything and he is know of all things hmm. that's a good good um good question okay so what do you think what the solution now because if he is almighty you know what we understand that almighty god we call him almighty for he have any power every power correct that's correct so he do not need a girlfriend he can say b is going to be that's simple because even what the quran says in different place if Allah wants something to be, He says B is going to be correct. That's correct. Okay, so what, what is this excuse here? What does having a girlfriend have to do? We are talking about Allah. We are talking about a man. This this is an answer can be good for me and you. I am single. You ask me why you don't have a child. I say, well, how I'm going to have a child if I don't have a wife or girlfriend? That makes sense. But that does not make sense to God. You are. Right. So what we would do, my friend Muhammad? Well, um, I have no answer to you. Um, okay. Well, I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. What about Allah? Yeah. What Allah? What about Allah saying He will have sex with Himself? Show me. Okay. Give me a second. Allah said that if He want, if Allah He want to have a wife, a partner, He will have it within ourself this is Allah speaking yes Allah is speaking show me your proof okay no problem <clears throat> give me a second can you want the translation from the same uh, Shakir Sorry? Do you want the same translator? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This is the translation of Shakir. And let me show you that this is Shakir. Let us be sure first. Because uh -huh. sometime it might change. No, this is Yusuf Ali actually. Let me go to Shakir. Here we go. Shakir. Let me show you on the screen. Shakir, we click apply. All right, here we go. We have Shakir. All right. Had we wished to make a diversion, we would have made it from ourselves. Had we wished to make a division, we would. Hmm. What diversion? I mean, do you know what diversion means? We had made it from before ourselves. Hmm. By no means would we. Do it. What is what is me? What does it mean by we had we wished to make the vision? What does that mean? Well, this is a translation. The fact it does not say the version, it says the word in Arabic. Lahu, do you speak Arabic? No, man. Okay, Lahu in Arabic. Lahu means fun, but in the old language of the Arab, Lahu is a woman who is for for sex, for fun. So if you go to the front translator, just to show you. You know, we will go back to the translation you like because you choose this one. If you go to the front translator as an example, let us see Hilali and Khan. You will see Hilal and Khan says, Had we intended to take a pastime, i.e., a wife or a son, etc., we could surely have taken it from ourselves. But we don't have you know, you know we, are not, we, we don't have a plan to do so. Okay. Allah wanna take Can a we... wife. 
Allah wanted to intended to take past time. Mm. A wife, Hassan, we could surely have taken it from us mm. if we are going to do that. What translation is this? Uh, this is Hilali and Khan. Okay. Okay. If we go, do you like to see the interpretation? Yeah, please. Okay. You are a Sunni or Shia? Sunni. All right. That's wonderful. Oh, this is a Jalalain. Oh, 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 on the sect of Sunni, which is uh, Muhabi. That's wonderful. So this is Tafsir al Jalalain. Saying, had we desired to find some diversion that which provide diversion in the way of partner or a child, we would have found it with ourselves. Who is ourselves? Allah is one, correct? That's correct. So, how Allah want to take a partner which is a woman from ourselves? Had we desired to find some diversion that which provide diversion in the way of partner or a child we would have found found it with ourselves from among the beautiful eyed worries or angels mm. where we used to so but we did not do so thus we never desired we would have found it with ourselves mm. Allah is one but yet he says he would have sex with ourselves because here talking about having a partner for sex and it says even there in the front of your eyes from what from the beautiful eyed hories the hories are a human female correct well uh, i have no um, answer to this right. okay so um, what do you do now my friend you are a muslim you are a wahhabi you are a sunni uh, you, you are the one who will join mujahideen one day to get the 70 versions but as you see allah is sleeping with them already and how Allah is saying, uh, how Allah he says ourselves, we are the Muslims. Why Allah Allah he says we? They say this is a majestic statement because he is like a king. Okay, no problem. We will let it go. But here he cannot. Uh, we cannot play this game. He will take a partner from ourselves, so it cannot be him, right? That's correct. Okay. So who is the ourself? And why? <laughs> how God can take a partner? She is a woman. She is a whore. A hoori is just a woman, she is very white to the point you can see through the marrow of their bones. So, how the partner of Allah in the bed, she is a female woman. This is the, on the only way to believe in this is if Allah Himself is a man. That's correct. You actually right. I can, that's, I don't know, I find that very disturbing. And to be honest, I've never ever read this verse. My friend, this is why Muslims, they always, they call me. They say, we never heard this before. But as you see, I'm showing on the screen everything I say. Right? This is the yeah. official, this is the official government mean. of the Kingdom of Jordan. Read with me. The official government of Jordan, Royal of Ahlul Bayt Institute, Islamic Taught and Amman. This is Sunni. And this is a Jalalain. And this is official. And this is your Quran. And this is a Jalalain. What website is this? I just told you this is at tafsir.com. Tafsir. At tafsir. At tafsir. Dot com. At tafsir. Well, uh, I have no answer to you. Um, you've proven, proven me wrong. So, what can I say to you? Mm, well, I don't know. I think uh, I think you are in your way to leave Islam because this is crazy. Allah is one, yet He want to take a partner. She is a female woman, in order to sleep with a woman, my, my friend. With my respect to you, okay, istighfar Allah, istighfar as much as you want, but you cannot answer. As you see here, in order for God to sleep with the women, you have to have what? You have to have a private part of a male. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Because the women she have a vagina, she don't have. Uh, she is a woman. Okay, God, His name is Allah. Women, her name is the Horis, which means she is very white. And now He is saying, if I want to take it, take it from ourself. The second I say ourself, it's mean me and her. We are from the same kind. If I go to your home now, I would respect yeah. to your family, and I say to you, who is with you? He says, just us. What do you mean? You mean you and your family, right? Honest. No. You don't say exactly. you, you don't say us about a stranger, the neighbor. He don't belong to you. He have nothing to do you, to you. So you say us. I mean, maybe your wife, your childrens. Huh? Okay, that's us. Okay, us, us here is who? 
ourselves and then we find that ourselves is women you're right you're actually right mm. then it makes sense when you when you say it so how allah can be god i have to ask my sheikh can you shake call, call me can you ask him to ch can you challenge him to call me is this is the only um scott account you have sorry is this the only scott you have account well, we do not need 10 uh, account one account is enough right even australia i don't know what time it is there um, no problem if you agree to debate me we can set up a time which is fit for me and him no problem Okay, what time I, is the day now? I am always uh, live on here actually, you know, every day almost I go. Right now, so you always live you always live on Skype? No, not in Skype. When I go live on air, my Skype go on air, on, on air too. So you you wanna call me, you go and see in YouTube and then you tell me, Okay, my shake is here when I call you, he's welcome. All right. But anytime he can Okay, no. yeah. Okay, no problem because I can't answer you because um you seem you seem your own point. Okay. And, um, well, Muhammad, let me then, uh, you know, I don't want to ask you questions. I want you to tell me, forget about me, uh, you know, try showing you things which is really crazy about Muhammad and his uh, book. What about you show me something is good about Islam or something can convince us or what is convincing you that Muhammad is a prophet? If you read in the Quran, um, it says, whoever kills one person has killed the whole mankind. So... Hmm. That's showing that Islam is peace. That's not really what it says. The Quran. Prove it. The Quran speak that this is an order Allah He gave to the Jews, not to you. Prove it. Hmm? Oh, here we go. Chapter five, verse number thirty-five. You read it for me. Okay. <clears throat> For this did we prescribe to the children of Israel, and whoever slays a soul, unless it will be for manslaughter of his mischief in the land, it is as though he slew all men, and whoever keeps it alive, as as it is as though he kept alive all men. Essentially, our apostles came to them with clear arguments, but even after them, even after that, many of them certainly act. Exactly in the land. Hmm. So is that for Israel, my friend, or this is for Muslims? Or well, doesn't wait for the reason we not describe as well. Yeah, but you gotta read the verses before that. No problem, you can read ten verses. The Quran is have nothing to do with each other. Quran is not connected really, you know. Yeah. Read it. This is about Allah speaking about what he gave the Jews. He told the people of Israel. Do you see the word Israel? This is the first yes, same verse you quote for me. Okay, so then. this is this is okay. The verse after it. Look at this. So how the one who kills someone, a soul, as if he killed all mankind, and the verse after it says, the way the the the, the punishment for those who waged war against Allah and His apostle, His apostles to cut their hands, to cut their feet, to crucify them. Okay, what is the war? Me right now, I'm doing war against Allah. So according to the Quran. Now I am a criminal. I should be killed. I should be crucified. So how he says to us, the Quran says in chapter five, verse number thirty-two, the one who kills someone is innocent, as if he called all mankind. And the same Quran saying, anyone who wage war, war against Allah, you know, cut his hands, torture him, not only kill him. This is torture. This is a horror movie. Why you want to cut hands of people and why you want to crucify them? Kill them. Let's say uh, if somebody is a criminal. Okay, kill him. Why you want to torture? The punishment of those who wage war against Allah and His apostle who strive to make mischief in the land is only his. This they should be murdered or crucified, or their hands and their feet be cut hmm. off on opposite sides, or they should be imprisoned. They shall be disgraced for them in this world, hmm. and, and hereafter they shall have grief, chaste treatment. Hmm. Does it say in the translation of you see in the front of you of your choice? Does it say they should be murdered? It does. Okay. What does murder mean? Murder is killing somebody 
He's a victim. That's correct. Okay, so what, do, what so how the verse before says don't kill somebody innocent, and then the yeah, verse but, after it says yeah, you, gotta read, you gotta look into the history for this verse. Like, my friend, no why? problem, no problem. Trust me, I know all the history. I know all the history, but it says the murder them, murder them. I mean, why even, is murder? Even even in the Old Testament, it says um, it says murder innocent people, doesn't it? Where? In the Old Testament, well, Muhammad here is trying. Uh, Muhammad in verse number thirty-two, he's trying to cover to copy from the Old Testament. It's from the Old Testament where it says, "Don't murder innocent people." So Muhammad trying Prove to copy. Him. Okay, we can show you, but here Muhammad is trying to prove everything Muhammad he come with is coming from somewhere. Everything, not a single story in the Quran is the story of Muhammad. Let, let me ask you: Have you ever heard of uh, uh, Alexander the Great? Yes. Okay. Is he a Muslim? Yes. But Alexander the Great is a homosexual and he is a bisexual. How he can be a Muslim prophet? You're saying all this. Why don't you prove it? You can go right now, search in Google. They will see that he was a bisexual. He sleep with men and women, <laughs> and they sleep with him too. You know. <laughs> Secondly. Secondly, when you say uh, you are laughing, why you are laughing? Because it's foolish what you're saying. Really, it's foolish. Why? Isn't it foolish because to believe Alexander the Great, who is a pagan, that he's a prophet of Allah? <laughs> How he can be a prophet of Allah? He's a pagan. Yeah, but that is. Greatest and best role model of people is Muhammad, not Alexander the Great. Is, is, I don't understand. Say again, what? Yeah, but we don't care about Alexander the Great. We care about Muhammad. No, it doesn't matter. You care about who you care about. What Allah said? Don't you care about the word of Allah? Of course, I do. Okay, if the word of Allah is silly, it's mean Allah cannot be God. Look what Allah He said about Alexander the Great. The one you claim and you agree that He is a prophet in Islam. He said that he found the sun sitting in murky water. Do you believe that the sun sit in murky water, or you believe that the sun sit in the in the in the microwave? No, no. It meant like the sun when they said the sun rested in the murky water. It doesn't mean literally rested in the murky water. It was like no. It means that. And, it means that. You see the Muslim here. They give false translation says he found it going down into a black sea there's nowhere it says black sea it says a spring of murky water we change the translation look how muslims always they fabricate i don't know what to, what to say i mean there I'm is too. no there is no honest translation okay here we go to, we, should, we go to yusuf ali look what happened right. until when he reached the sitting of the sun he found it set in a spring of a murky water does it say that Until when he re reached the setting of the sun, he found it. He found this in the spring of murky water. He found the people. He, he said, "Oh, the Quran was such an authority, either to punish them or to treat them with kindness." Hmm. Do you yeah, believe? If really? you look at if you look at this translation in old Arabic, murky water means black sea. No, in Arabic, there's no black sea. Here we go. Let me read it for you in Arabic, my friend. Arabic is my language. I am not from China. As simple as that. And this is the translation. It says, he what, type of, what type of Arabic are you? What? What type of um, Middle Eastern are you? I don't understand. What? Middle Eastern? Are you are you um are you a shorty no I am an Egyptian Arab. no I am not an Egyptian I am an Arab what type of Arab the kind of every, every Arab has a different translation the kind who take different. a shower once a year I mean who care I don't take a shower once a year I think next week I have my annual shower what does this have to do with my topic my friend now if I go and I give interpretation that the Sun set in murky water do you think that would be a foolish from me to say such a thing? I'm not gonna lie, it is. Huh? 
I'm not gonna lie, it is kind of funny to say that. No, no, I'm not saying, Allah, I, I'm not Allah saying that. I, let's say I am the one giving interpretation. I understood it in such a way. Is that what make me foolish to understand it in such a way that the sun really set in murky water? It is foolish. Okay, it's foolish. Okay, guys, did he say it's foolish? Muhammad, he said it's foolish. So if a Christian prince, he say that this is what it says, and this is his understanding, this is a foolish understanding. Do we agree with that, Muhammad? I shouldn't be saying this, but I do agree. Yeah, so you are saying if I say that, okay, I am foolish. Okay, what if I show you that Muhammad is the one who said that? All right, show me then. All right. You know, I, I, I expect from you to be a, a person who respect his words as a man. And everybody heard you saying that this is a foolish. So if Muhammad says that, then you have to be brave and stand with your words. You cannot take it back. If you can prove that, I'll take my words. Okay, here we go. Muhammad is the man. He will keep his word. Be with witness, guys. This is the hadith. Read with me yeah, carefully. How can you read from hadith? Hadith don't mean nothing. They're weak. Who said it's, it's weak? How, the, how you know it's, it's weak? Hold on, hold on. First of all, you said to me, you will keep your words if I show you Muhammad, he said that. Now, right okay. away, before even you read the hadith, even before you read the hadith, you come with says, it is weak. Did you even know the hadith? Do you know even which, which book? You don't know. But this is a defense system from the Muslims. Right away, anything we show them, we say it's weak. No, it's not weak. Here we go. Let us click at the hadith and see. Read with me carefully. Oh, sit. Read carefully. Oh, sit. Does it say does it say weak? Oh, it says sahih. What is that sahih? I can't see it. Hmm. Now, do you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, so it's sahih. Now we go to the hadith. I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah. You read it for us. Your English is better than mine. Go ahead. I can't see it. Why well, you can't see it? Oh, no, I can see it. I was sitting behind the Messenger of Allah. He was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, Do you know where this sits? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, It sits in a spring of warm water. Hamiyas. So, what the hell? You said, What the hell? I agree with you. What the hell? Uh, guys, did you hear it? What the hell? What Muhammad is talking about? You said anyone who says that is foolish. Are you willing to say it again? Be a man, and you you promise you will not take it back. I shouldn't be saying it, but it does sound foolish. It sounds foolish. I agree with you. Thank you, Muhammad. So Muhammad he say foolish things, and he claim, and this is in total agreement with the Quran. So there is no way Muhammad is a prophet of God, yet he don't understand what Allah he gave him. Who can understand the Quran better? You, me, or Muhammad? For sure, Muhammad. Correct. Right. Okay, so Muhammad he understand the Quran and he's explained to us the verse the sun set in the murky water Exactly as it says in the Quran. So how Muhammad can be a prophet of God saying foolish stuff I don't know what to say to you Well, you should leave Islam my friend You're a man of it's not that easy. But when, when it's easy You just say this is foolish. Are you going to follow something foolish with my respect to you? It's not hard, like it's hard, you know, going up with the my friend. It's, it's hard, I understand it's hard, but are we going to follow something foolish just because it's hard? I mean, that would make it more foolish with my respect to you again. Do you agree no, no, I agree with what you're saying. Okay, but... so, so in, because it's hard, I will decide to stay and follow something foolish, and that will make it foolish. That will make um, it more foolish. Before, before I do it, but I want to get my sheikh to call you. But you just said this is foolish. You are out of Islam already. You just insulted Muhammad. You just said Muhammad is saying foolish things, which means he's a foolish man and he's a liar in the top of that. Because it's a foolish to lie. It's a foolish to lie about God. And it's a big foolish to think you can fool people claiming that God told you. So Muhammad here is not only making some statement foolish because we can say stupid, stupid things, all of us. But he claimed that he's speaking in the name of God. He claimed that he's a prophet of God. He claimed that what he is telling us is godly words and godly knowledge. So now when he speak, he speak in the name of the God which he sent him. So speaking foolishness is an insult to Allah, insult to you, 
insult to every one of us because this man is trying to fool us, make us believe that he's a prophet. You're right. So I'm in disagreeing with you, but you cannot disagree with me. So you have to leave us now. Now you just said you cannot disagree with me. You cannot disagree with. I heard you. Okay. Why you don't leave Islam? Say I am out of out of Islam. You are a smart man. You will not you will not accept, and you have an honor. I can tell you kept your words. There's many they don't keep their words. They are they are potatoes. You are a man. So how a man like you, brave man like you? It's easy for you to say. No 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 no. It's not easy, my friend. I deal with Muslims every day. I'm not going to foolish to follow any anything foolish. I'm not a fool. I'm not stupid. It's an insult to me. It's an insult to you. It's an insult to you to respect yourself and yet you believe you are going to pray in the morning to someone he is foolish i'm getting goosebumps sorry i'm getting goosebumps you are getting what goosebumps i'm not sure what does that mean What do I say? You should leave Islam. Say, I am out of Islam, my friend. I am out of foolishness. That's not for you. You are smarter than this. Just say it. I don't know, man. Why you don't know? You know. You just said Muhammad is a foolish man. You just said that. You know, if you say you are out of Islam or not yet, you you just already did. Say it. I am out of the cult of Islam. It's obvious that this is a cult. I am out of. I am out of the cult of Islam. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. We are so happy for you. You are a smart man. You made a good decision. You call me as a Wahhabi Muslim, and now you are out of the cult of Islam. What do you want more? It's a good day for you, my friend. This is a wonderful day for you. So all your life you spend worshiping false God, false prophet, following false teaching, making fun of us. And look, it took us not long, and you discovered that everything they taught you, it was a lie. Now, my friend, what do you think about Christianity? As long as you left Islam, I am a Christian, as you know. What do you think about what, what what do you think about following Christ? So because so, because I left so if I die today would I go heaven or hell? No, today you are going no heaven no hell yet because simply still you are alive and you are breathing and God will let you have your chance to the last moment in your life to make a decision. And this is why I'm asking you, because I would love to help you. I helped you to leave the cult of Islam, but now I would love to help you to go to heaven as I believe, which is believing in the Messiah. That? Okay, you believe in the Messiah. The Messiah is the only one who can save you. Not me, no one, no prophet, no prophet, no priest, no bishop, no sheikh, nobody. The only one who can save you is the Messiah. You accept him, you give your heart to him, you promise to obey him. To be a decent man, you don't, you know, the Ten Commandment is there. Don't kill, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't, 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 don't. But the most important thing is to be a person who loves the world, to be a loving person like the Messiah. And the second you say, the second you practice one sentence of Jesus Christ's teaching, which is that if a person he love the one who is his enemy then we have no enemy left and then you will know the wisdom of God love your enemy bless those who curse you so you forget about everything you learned as a Muslim cursing people cursing Christians cursing Jews curse cursing the Shia curse cursing the atheist all of this madness it's hateful you dump it in the back and you love even your enemy and then you will see inside you will be a different person and here you notice right away that this is must be a teaching from the true god not god who teach hate spread hate between people love your enemy pray for those who curse you 
So if you practice one sentence of Christ, the whole actually imagine Muhammad, if me and you and everybody in this earth practice that's just just one sentence, not the whole Bible, just one sentence Jesus said, love your enemy. Do you think we will need an army? Nobody will need you are. nobody will need the police, and nobody will be hungry. And nobody will be homeless and nobody will be killed and no one no woman will be raped and no no weak person will be assaulted or take advantage of us because all of us we love everybody then everybody help everybody it's a perfect community it's heaven and earth so following jesus bring heaven to this earth even though this earth is not heaven so why you don't want to follow jesus you explained it very good what I always thought was different. They lie to you, my friend. They lie to you. And here we are truthful people. It's not going to be easy for me, but I guess it's worth it. Well, it's not about easy. It's about following the truth. It's not only about worth it. It is the truth. You see, it's not about worth it. This is not about a value. This is not about a great teaching. This is about following the truth. We are not following a philosopher who speak philosophy. We are following God who teach the truth and the truth will set you free. So I'm not asking you to believe in Jesus, to believe in a person who speak good. No. We are following a person who no one speak like him. No one. And his wisdom is beyond imagination. And the beauty of his wisdom is beyond the beauty. And the truth of his wisdom is the solution for all our problems in this earth. And that's why, my friend, I'm asking you to believe in him and to accept him today, tonight, before you go to bed, so you can feel comfortable and you will not be worried about going to hell. I accept him. I mean to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my friend. Praise be to the Lord, our friend Muhammad. It's actually it's amazing that three days we have and the three Muhammad left Islam. You believe it? <laughs> three Muhammad left Islam. And you are number three in the last what 48 hours or maybe three days. So, my friend Muhammad, I'm really so happy for you. And as you see, this is Matthew chapter 5, verse number 44. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you. Have you ever heard of somebody saying, do good to those who hate you? No, never. And pray for those who persecute you, hurt you. I mean, imagine. I mean, what is left? What where we can go farther how noble he is and this is the best way To overcome your anger and your hate and hate is the first enemy for us Hate kill me before it kill my enemy There's many people die because of their hate because of their jealousy because of their anger Hate will kill you. Hate is a poison yeah. inside your heart Yeah, you're right. I'm not gonna lie. It is a disgusting um emotion to express towards someone and here we notice the different and the huge difference between the words of muhammad and the words of the messiah muhammad he speak foolishness stupidity and the messiah he provide us with amazing beautiful wisdom can help us in everything who need what what kind of god he want to give me women and 72 women and that will give me in this private part what is that i mean this is crazy and this is even not Respectful for God. So, yeah. so, Muhammad, I want you to do me a favor, my friend. I want you, you, you know, the, the Bible is, uh, you live in Australia, correct? Yeah. The Bible is available for free everywhere, and uh, you can read it even in the internet. We have the free, the four Gospels, and four Gospels mean four witnesses. Doesn't mean that they are not Gospel, just four witnesses. Four witnesses for the message and the teaching of Christ. I advise you to read it from your heart and always when you read the gospel try to live it not just to read it there's there's people who read with their eyes but their heart is not there so i would like you to try your best 
to read the gospel and to live the gospel which mean imagine yourself there like you know we're talking about the Messiah speaking to a crowd uh, you can play audio uh, there's there's a website they, they have audio for the gospel so you can relax and the person is reading the gospel for you imagine yourself there and live the words of God and the Word of God will guide you and the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit will be with you my friend from today from today you are a child of God you are not a slave of Allah you know how we Christian, you know how we Christian we pray right you heard us no. saying, our father art of heaven not anything our father do you know what our father mean like our father, like our father like a father that's wonderful so you in Islam you were a slave you now in Christianity you are a child of God this is how much he loves you a child of God who is belong to his father not a slave yes at the end of the day you know he can enslave us he can destroy us he can do whatever he wants with us but because he is a loving God we are his children he gave us the honor to call him God our father this is how loving he is so the God we worship is totally far by nature by ethic by teaching by everything from the false God of Muhammad I mean happy for you my friend Muhammad and I'm happy for you to be today to accept the Messiah and to leave Islam and feel free please to call me anytime you wish and don't forget to tell your Sheikh to call me if he dare okay but pray for me okay uh, we will all the Christians here we have like today we are not busy too much because I, I I'm going late here in USA we have only like 800 all the Christians here trust me they are praying from their heart for you and even your family and even those who will not like to hear the news that you left Islam and you became a Christian today I mean brother all right my friend good to see you and thank, good thank you so much for answering God the plus take care my friend take care Muhammad. you too bye bye please guys everybody pray for our brother Muhammad and by the way, don't change your name. Keep your name Muhammad and witness to Jesus as Muhammad. Don't call yourself James. Don't call yourself Thomas. Don't call yourself David. You are as your name is. It would be wonderful to have a Muhammad witnessing to Jesus the Christ as his God and his Savior. Keep your name, my friend. And in the last three days, we have three Muhammad left Islam. <laughs> that's wonderful is it so and by the way not all those who leave Islam talking to me they come on air there's many of them this is why I'm losing my voice because I'm not talking only in air I you know people they ask me to speak in private because they don't want to be exposing themselves and this is why my voice is really hurting me and this is why I said you know I want to take two days off because I'm really I'm getting headache from talking too much I'm not talking only the YouTube I do this is not really the problem it's after that you know like you know it's endless but still I cannot resist I cannot resist to do what need to be done and here we go thank you Lord if no uh, um, if not a Muslim he posted a link in my channel about that video I will not be going live on air so look what happened a Muslim wanted to supposedly refute us made me come here and when I came here, we got this gentleman, Muhammad, calling me to prove me wrong. He called me as a Muslim Sunni Wahhabi, and he left as a Christian who believed in the Messiah, the Christ as his Lord. Isn't it God is wonderful? But please pray for this gentleman and his family. His Muslim family pray for them. His Muslim family, they need your prayer too. So they will accept him and they will be loving people and they will remember that this is their son who he loved them and my friend love your family don't do what the muslims do quran chapter 9 verse number 23 it says you cannot take even your father and your brother as a friend don't do that you are a christian now don't do that you are a christian and you have a duty to love your family to love everybody and your family are the first to start with 
Muhammad because uh, he is a very evil man he wanted to be sure that we will not get a close as mankind together we will not love each other so he wanted to establish enmity and hatred and the purpose is very simple if everybody hate everybody then we will never be friends as simple as that take not Christians and Jews as a friends but that will not stop there that will go and he will say Allah he will spread hatred and enmity and then in chapter 9 23 if we go in there in the Quran let us go to chapter 9 you will see how evil this cult is where it says and we read together the Muslim translation 23 sorry we pass it no oh, this is chapter 9 10 sorry chapter 9 read all who you believe take not uh, for protectors your father and your brother by the way this is false translation it says take them not as a friends take them not as friends not only as protectors so you cannot take your father and your brother as a friend or as a protectors but he is your father and he the other guy he is your brother what happened just because now I became a Christian I should hate them absolutely not you cannot even be Christian if you hate them to be Christian is to be a loving person to kill your hatred you kill it you bury it you get rid of it you throw it away you demolish it you are a new creation you are a new person look how evil this this is oh who you have faith oh who you believe do not be friend your father and your brother why because they are bad people they are not muslims yasin want to call me uh, sorry yasin today i am uh, I have enough. I'm really my my uh, my throat hurt, uh, and you can tell. Actually, I'm even sleepy. It's it's already three a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it's the three a.m. in the morning. <laughs> uh, anyway, the Lord always he bless us, and uh, we know the work we do will not will not be demolished. Uh, you know, you you might get tired. You might uh, uh, feel uh, exhausted but at the end of the day the reward is big and the Bible says a happiness will be in the kingdom of God for one soul found the truth found the way happiness so if now we were able to help our brother Muhammad but not only we break we brought happiness to him we brought happiness to the kingdom of God for today we have a new brother in Christ and not only he is a new brother his name is Muhammad how wonderful so I want to say thank you guys for being here don't forget please to download the video share it with your friends and pray again and remember to pray for brother Muhammad uh, who will go through a spiritual uh, let us say you know discrimination you can imagine now how much the people around him they might hate him uh, but it's worth it I'm not going to follow a foolish man as we heard Muhammad saying this is foolish foolish man should not be followed foolish is the one who worship wrong God foolish is the one who disobey God foolish is the one who think he is God foolish the one he think he can live without God foolish is the one he worship himself Foolish is the one who is selfish. Foolish is the one who don't love others. Foolish is the one who hate. All of this lead to one thing, hell. The Messiah, our beloved and loving Lord, 
he will lead us to the best the best we can have and the best which we don't even deserve we are sinners my friend we don't even deserve his love but because he is amazing loving person yet even though we don't deserve it still he will be merciful thank you all for being here may the lord bless you all and i hope to see you soon again christ is lord islam is false and thank you bye bye